Thick dark chocolate caramel and creamy white nougat. Mars Dark. For five days only at the Sweet Centre, we bring you our best ever offer. Choose any sweet or settee and pay absolutely nothing for 18 months and take four years interest-free credit. That's four whole years free credit with absolutely nothing to pay for 18 months, not even a deposit. That's the Sweet Centre's best ever offer, but it's only for five days. And it ends Monday, 9 p.m. You know, you'd look great as a blonde. Do I know you? Nice and easy. 104, it's you. <laughs> well, I've never colored my hair. Oh, trust me. See, Nice and Easy works with your hair's own tones and highlights. Look at mine. Doesn't that look natural? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time to print. <laughs> she looks fabulous. She's going to stop traffic. <laughs> it's nice and easy to be natural. They're armed and dangerous. Run for the shoot! I'm trying to catch out! Risking everything. One more job. Sunshine. All the way. But they're being watched. I think I've got something going. Closely. Uniforms found a getaway car in a factory car park. The stakes are high. Right, got the money! The game has no rules. Six two have been fired on. And it's about to get personal. I'm sorry. Thief Takers. Thursday at 9 on Carlton. It's tough being a Hollywood man, as you'll find out at nine. But first, here's Des. Isn't it cold? Now, if you were watching the show last week, you will remember I told you a gang of thieves broke into a security vault and stole a priceless collection of records. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Everything I've ever recorded, a lifetime's work, gone. Oh. <laughs> and the insurance company are refusing to pay out. Oh. They're saying it was an act of God. <laughs> I said, hang on, act of God. They had to shin up two drain pipes, crawl on the stomachs through an air duct, and lower themselves upside down through a fanlight. They said, well, God moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> but happily, the police are on the case. They have warned that the thieves who stole my records could be dangerous. <laughs> especially if they've been listening to them. <laughs> there have been reports that thieves plan to bootleg the master tapes and flood the market with imitations of my hits. Aww. Now, can you imagine what a cheap imitation of one of my hits would sound like? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bear thinking about. Now, if any of you have already acquired some of my stolen records and you're frightened, Trying to be caught, <laughs> trying to be caught with them and the shame this will bring on you and your family. Well, the police have agreed an amnesty. So just hand them in at your nearest police station or bottle bank. <laughs> Some sad news. Some sad news this week. Listen to this. They're going to do away with the old-fashioned policeman's helmet. Aww. The old copper's helmet is going to go. I wonder what they'll do next time there's a streaker. <laughs> because well there's not a lot of room in those flat caps <laughs> where's that where's my little friend she's been in the news again <clears throat> fergie when she appeared on the show two weeks ago all the people at CBS in America were so impressed with her, they offered her her own talk show. Her own t It's going to be called York Talk. <laughs> <laughs> or is it Yorkie Talkie? <laughs> Fergie rang me at the weekend. 
in the middle of the night. I knew it was her. She reversed the charges. <laughs> <laughs> From Sunningdale. <laughs> she said, I can't talk long. The bailiffs are taking the bed. <laughs> and I'm in it. <laughs> right in it. <laughs> I said to her, I said, if it's about the tenor I lent you last summer, forget it. She said, no. No. What's the secret of being a good talk show host? I said, the golden rule is listen carefully and pay attention. She said, what's the secret of being a good talk show host? <laughs> <laughs> there is... There's good news and bad news for Fergie. Good news is she's flying up to America to meet her financial advisors. The bad news is Prince Philip is driving her to the airport. <laughs> We've got a bit of a scoop here tonight. We've managed to get hold of another unauthorised recording of Prince Philip on his mobile phone. <laughs> just 14 words. I have to get back to you, I've just hit the car in front. <laughs> Actually, there were 16 words, but I'm not allowed to tell you the other two. <laughs> We've got some great music tonight. Two of the great rock and roll bands of all time, Status Quo and the Beach Boys, singing together. <laughs> the big hit from Lighthouse Family, you're gonna like that. Two of the biggest record sellers in the world, Mariah Carey and Garth Brooks, doing their song. <laughs> Actor Ted Danson joins us from America, and funny man Lee Evans are all in here tonight. But right now, a very funny lady making her first appearance on the show. I don't think it'll be a last. Will you welcome Jenny Clare? Oh, I smell nice. I smell mm. like... I'm told I smell you like... Smell come closer, nice. child. Come closer. Mm. Listen, very I'm just posh. saying. Well, I was just saying upstairs, it's very difficult for ladies in comedy. And you know, you're the first lady comedian. First Perry Award winner. To yes. Be a woman, yes. I'm proud of that. Back. Very, yeah. Smug, almost. <laughs> you, you seem to, um, when I had that little sneak look at your work, you seem to, and we're, we're targets, we fellas. I mean, you, you, you're, you're ruthless. Well, I will occasionally give the boys what I call a verbal body slapping. A bit of stick. <laughs> um, but, I'm, uh, well, I know I actually really like men. I do. They're my favourite thing on toast. <laughs> um, and on stage, I do come across as a bit of a mad old slapper from hell, but in reality, in reality, I've settled down and I am in a stable relationship. That's right, I live with a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, it's my job. <laughs> Are you, well, how long have you been married then? I'm not married, no. Uh, look at me, I'm nearly 30. And, um, <laughs> and a spinster. But I am a mother, I am a mother. Um, because somehow I got caught up in that pregnancy craze back in the late 80s. And uh, for a while, you know, <laughs> for a while I was the perfect mother. And then the pethidin wore off. <laughs> so are you, is this a, a little boy we're talking about, a little girl? No, I've got a girly one. Oh. And, oh, she's, um, let me think. Um, well, she's about that big. Well, she's that big with the bouffant. <laughs> and uh, she's six. And it's such a sweet, sweet oh, age. Cool. It's a lovely age. Because all the teeth are falling out. <laughs> you know, I've nearly got enough for a necklace, guys. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, she is an only child. And people say to me, won't she be lonely? I say, no, she's got a video. Because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm not having any more. Because childbirth, childbirth ruins your body. Ladies and gentlemen, it ruins your body. I am just a shambles from the waist down, I am. And you can always tell women that have had loads of kids, not just by the bottoms whiffling around in the breeze. <laughs> you can tell by their hands. They've always got hands like that. Do you know what that's called? That's called the buggy claw. <laughs> that's what wheeling buggies round all day it is. Anyway, this is true and it's a bit sad because I can't have any more children. Because I've had... Oh, oh no, I can't because I've had my tubes tied. <laughs> Not on purpose. I spent a night with a balloon modeler. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? <laughs> Would you say that you're uh, a good mother? I mean, it's, 
I mean, you spend a lot of time because you must well, have a lot of time with the work too. Well, I have been accused of being an unfit mother, and I am, because I don't do any exercise whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I tell a lie, because I did go swimming once. This is true, this is how completely rubbish I am. I went swimming, I left the house. I, I was going swimming, I left the house with two plastic bags. One contained my swimming togs, the other contained rubbish to put in the bin on the way out. Don't ask me what happened. I won't ask what happened. <laughs> what it happened? Is, it is very difficult trying to swim in a chicken carcass <laughs> that is too small for you and there are used tea bags floating off it, you know. I'm really, really unhealthy because uh, you can probably smell it on me, I smoke. Uh, you're not a smoker. No. I know I can smell. But, um... <laughs> now then, at the moment, you're in the middle of what is, I assume, a very heavy oh, tour. Oh, a date. rigorous tour. I mean, I assume you smoke and drink a little and a little. I do, are you accusing me of being an mm, alcoholic? No, no, not really. I'm just asking. I do, occasionally. A after a gig. The journey away. After a gig, I'll, yeah, I'll chuck a load of lager down my neck. And this, it, I always end up in the same state. I wake up in strange hotel rooms like this. Because <laughs> I've got into the Corby trouser press by accident. I've mistaken it for the bed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I, I will admit to drinking when I get nervous. I get nervous in domestic situations. Say like friends have come for supper and I can't cook and I get really nervous because they're expecting a proper meal with a salad and I can't, you know. I start drinking, 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 drinking. Hey, it's a good job I've got a hostess trolley. I need it to wheel myself in on, you know. <laughs> and my favourite drink though, have you tried Retsina? That's a Greek Oh, you're a well-travelled man, aren't Ooh, you? I've, I've been to Barnes. It's very, very sophisticated. <laughs> uh, no, Retsina is a Greek wine, as you say, and it's made out of pine cones. It's brilliant. It's just like disinfectant. It's fantastic. It means, <laughs> it means you can throw up and clean the toilets at the same time. <laughs> now, that's what I call sensible drinking, I do. Now, fashion, I would have thought, is something that you're into. Are you into yes. all this uh, ornamenting one's nose and sticking... You're talking about body piercing, aren't you? In a roundabout way, you're trying to sneak that in. Yeah. I have had my nipples pierced, yes. OK, I have. <laughs> I'll tell you what... Why would you do a thing like that? I had my nipples pierced because I got sick of losing my car keys. <laughs> What were you like as a teenager? Well, I was a bit of a tart. You I, were I was. A bit loose? Oh, a little bit. Oh, all over the place. No, I was a nightmare. I think all teenage girls are nightmares, aren't they? I think even Heidi went through a difficult stage. <laughs> you know. I'm sort of flat scrammed and I'm having a shaggy turn. <laughs> but I was a teenager in the 70s and it was a great time. Do you remember the puff sleeve blouse? Puff sleeve blouse. One false move and you'd be down the disco with half a shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> your mum and your dad, I assume, watch your performances. What, 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 do they like what you're doing? They watch from behind the sofa going, <laughs> no, no. Um, they're incre incredibly supportive. They're very, very nice people. It's a bit sort of dazed by the fact that both my brother and sister are barristers and I'm not. Barristers? Uh, yes, I know. It's very handy when I'm in court. Barristers. <laughs> uh, but to be honest, I mean, it doesn't really matter what my mother thinks now because this is a joy. For the first time in my life, I'm bigger than she is. And I like to remind her of this. Every time she comes over to my house, I measure her up against the kitchen wall. I, uh, last time I saw her, I said, if you live much longer, there's going to be pencil marks on that skirting board. <laughs> Do you know, she got a bit upset, she did. She started to cry. She got in her right mess. So I did something, Des, I have been wanting to do for years. I spat on a hanky and I wiped her face. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what she used to do to me. Oh, she never bothered with the hanky. She just used to gob on my face and wipe me down with her sleeve. <laughs> Is it any wonder? <laughs> Well, listen, you're a very funny lady and we wish you lots of luck. That's More Perrier's Awards Ooh. and go on and knock them for dead. Jenny Eclair, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. Here's a new band, a new band from Newcastle. And this band was so skint when they started, they had to make their demo records on an answer phone. Well, one way or another, they got the right number because here they are with their new single, Lifted. Please welcome Lighthouse Family. Yeah. 